Hi everyone and welcome back. Some of you have been asking for a tutorial on how to flip your grip. So that means bringing your back foot into your head with the use of your hand. When I first learned this, it felt incredibly intense on my body to rotate my elbow up and forward. And um, the pose itself requires quite a bit of flexibility in your shoulders, in your side waist, in the back, in your front hip flexors, everything. So we will be showing some exercises that I wish I had known back then when I was working on this. And we'll use some props to also help build the flexibility. If you don't have two blocks and a yoga strap, at least find a belt or a scarf or even a shirt or leggings. Just something so that you can loop up your foot and help bridge the gap from your hand to your foot. As always, listen to your body. If it doesn't feel good, just ease off. You can always come back to this practice as you build flexibility and become more comfortable. And if you do find this helpful, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe below so that I can continue to grow this channel and get more tutorials to you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Be close to the wall. Start in a nice tall seat. Let's start with some warm ups for the spine. Circle your chest forward, and then as you exhale, round your spine back. Inhaling to arch, exhaling to round. And then circle in the other direction. Inhale, arch forward, exhale, circle back. Back to center, hook your hands onto your thighs. Inhale to pull the heart up, look up. Exhale to round back, tuck chin, tuck chest. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, round back, even tuck your tailbone. Inhale to pull your heart forward, shoulders away from the ears, look up. Exhale, round back. Walk your hands forward, come into your puppy pose. I like to take my feet against the wall as I take my knees directly underneath my hips and I stretch my arms forward, forehead either to the mat or chin and chest to the mat. Whichever position you have, bend your elbows and take prayer behind your head, stretching your triceps and melt your chest down to the floor, stretching your shoulders. If you ever need a little bit more, you can take two blocks on the lowest setting and take your elbows onto the blocks. Forehead to the mat, again, melting yourself down. Maybe chin to the mat one day. And slowly rise back up. And come into a nice tall seat. Remove your props from underneath you if you have them and then slide onto your belly. Separate your feet to the corners of your mat and take your fingertips wide. So cobra rolls. Inhale to lift your heart, shoulders away from the ears, drag your toes back and then exhale to lower down. Hip bones stay down the whole time. Inhale to lift. Instead of here, lengthen your hips forward and pull your chest forward. Then exhale down. Let's take three more rounds. Inhale. Exhale. Keep actively dragging your toes back as you lift, inhale. And then exhale. One more, inhale, maybe plant the hands, lift the heart, exhale. Sphinx position, zip your thighs together, come up to your elbows and drag your elbows back as you pull your chest forward, toes engaging back. And lay down. Bend your right knee, either with your hand or you can use a strap 
you can strap up your foot and pull your heel into the outside of your right hip. So if this is okay for you and you need to go a little deeper, right? Use your hand and pull. Then from there, press your outer right hip down. Don't let it spin up. And you might even come up onto your elbow. Flip your elbow in, pull your foot up and point your elbow up. Keep pressing right outer hip down. You should feel a stretch in the quadricep and the hip flexor. And if you need a little bit more, come up onto the hand and pull your chest forward as you press your heel down. The whole time my hip bones are both flat on the mat, so I'm not lifting up here, right? It's always down here. And then slowly return. Let it go, let's switch sides. You can start by lying down to test. Foot to the outside of the hip, and you can just stay here. Or you'll come up to the elbow, grab the foot, and then spin your elbow to point up as you lift your heart forward. Outer left hip point, actively pressing and grounding down to the mat. Then from there, you can lift it up a level if you need more. Listen to the body, don't force anything. There should be no crunching. If there is, you're down here. Let it go slow. And then come on back to sit into child's pose. Come back to seated and we'll take some shoulder stretches. So have your shirt, scarf, strap ready. And I'm going to show from the back so that you can see. My right arm's gonna come up. My thumb is pointing straight back towards you guys. And I'm just going to take my hand down. So the thumb points straight down, right? From there, I'll just grab my strap. And then my left hand is going to come out, thumb down, bend it back to grab the strap. There is a variation where you can sneak your hands closer to interlock your hands, but for now, I'm looking for a long distance on the strap, so really lengthen it out. Then I'm going to straighten my right elbow, and then I'm going to pull my left hand back, away from my back, to arch my chest. So, from this side position, my hand is here, my left arm will lengthen the strap away. I straighten my right arm up, and then I pull my left hand away from my back. I lift the chest, and I look up, ear in front of your bicep, and stretch. And then I'll switch sides. So my left hand comes up to switch the strap, my right hand comes out, thumb down, and I reach it back behind me. I hold onto the strap, lengthen it away, then I straighten my left arm up, and then I pull my right arm back, and I pull my chest forward. Continuing with some hip flexor stretches, find your downward facing dog. I kind of like the blocks for this part, um, just for a little extra length. I'm going to take my right knee to the outside of my right elbow, heel down, and then I'm going to walk it into my pigeon. So what we don't want to see is really your thigh in the middle and you're just collapsing down onto that knee. Take it a little bit more external. Walk your left leg back. You can even use the wall to kick, which I personally like, to help me square a little bit better. I pull my left hip forward and my right hip back. And then start to come on down to your elbows to stretch your outer right hip. Press your right knee down into the mat. Engage your leg strength to lift up. And then take your fingers wide. So we'll do three more rounds of these cobra lifts. Inhale to lift up, using the strength of your right thigh and your back. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. Maybe even without your hands. Exhale down. Inhale, lift up. And exhale down. So you really do want this pigeon before you try to enter into your um, 
king pigeon variation. If your hip is tight and you try to, if your hips are like this and you're trying to flip your grip, you're not going to have a very stable base to do so, right? So working on your hip flexibility, making sure you're comfortable seated down here before you lift for your flip grip is definitely going to help the balance when you get up into it. Okay. From there, we'll just slide our right leg back and we'll take King Arthur series. So highly recommend having some blocks here for this and have your mat or even a pillow at the edge of your wall and your mat. We'll take the left knee to the corner have your blocks here and then press your right foot forward. Already here, you can feel stretch in your upper left quadricep. We're going to sink our hips down by walking our right foot forward and then walking our blocks forward. Try to avoid letting your right knee collapse outward. Keep it into the midline and squaring your hips as best as you can. So you should feel a deep stretch down the upper left thigh. And we'll just stay here for a few breaths. To come out, slowly back it up, and then take both feet back down and find some rest. Shake it out. Let's take the other side. So again, we'll take our pigeon pose. Left knee to the outside of your left wrist, heel towards the upper right hip, and then back knee comes down. I like to have my foot against the wall to push it back to help square myself. And then you'll just lay down for a few breaths to stretch. And from there, we'll take our hands wide. Inhaling to lift up, pull the heart forward, just like your cobra pose. And then exhale to lower. Inhale to spiral the chest up, lift. And exhale down. And you'll go up as high as you can, right? Using the strength of pressing your left hip down and lifting up. And then exhale down. Two more, inhale, and exhale. And it kind of helps to have your foot against the wall for this, inhale, because you can push it back. And then exhale. Slide the knee back, and then let's take that other side. So hands onto blocks on the highest setting, right knee to the corner, step your left foot out, and sink your hip down. So the wall provides a lot of information for us, whether it's foot against it for your pigeon cobra lifts and finding for your heel to point straight up to the ceiling, or for this, you can feel if your foot is turning out or in, and that kind of tells you if your hips are spinning open and um, not being fully square. So we're looking for our foot straight up to the ceiling, not turning to one side or the other, and sinking our hips down while the left knee stays in midline. Pull your right hip forward and you'll feel stretch up the right hip flexor and quadricep. So we'll work into the full position. We'll put everything together. Let's have you face the wall with two blocks against the wall. Hands to the blocks, find your downward facing dog. And let's start with the right foot. So walk it back, right knee forward, outside and wide, right heel to the upper left hip, right? This is all lined up. Start by allowing yourself to find balance in your hips. And then push into the blocks, lift your chest. So this is your cobra pose, right? You might even crawl your hands up and really lift and look up. If this is too easy, you'll move the blocks to the side and then shimmy yourself as close as you can to the wall. 
forearms maybe to the wall, lifting up. Right? If you find that you're falling to one side or the other, take a block and place it in between your left hip and your heel and press your hip into the block. Take a second block or a towel if it's too high and place it underneath your right hip. So now you're in this position, okay? If your hips are tighter. From there, grab your strap, have it ready. And we're going to kick our left leg up. We have to practice the rotation of the foot eventually so that when we get into the full position, we know how to grab the foot. But for now, just kick it up and loop it up with your strap. This might be the hardest part. So loop your ankle up with the strap and then lengthen it out so that you can square your chest back to the wall. My elbow is down right now and my thumb is pointing up. I'm going to spin my elbow up and point my thumb down. And I'm just going to practice this for a few rounds to warm up the shoulder joint for this rotation that we're going to do. Okay. And from there, I'm going to take my forehead here. And I'm going to take my elbow here, and my other elbow here. And I'm going to walk myself closer to the foot. I'm going to flex the foot, lift myself by pressing my right knee down, just like your cobra lift, to lift up. And then I'll maybe walk it closer to the foot. And I'll be here. So there's a lot happening right now. I'm doing that cobra lift. My right knee is pressing down into the mat to lift myself up. My left hip is pressing into this block or the floor to keep me balanced. I'm not just letting it spin open and up, right? I'm pressing it down into the block. I'm lifting my chest and I'm trying to find that same variation of straightening my elbows back, okay? Then, of course, this takes a lot of flexibility in that back hip too. Instead of struggling foot to head, Try taking your elbows, try looking up and taking your elbows together. Now look back. Okay, let it go, come on back. So, You might try the full position, and if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. This is just to show for the future when you do get there. I'm going to bend the foot, and I'm going to flex it so that the pinky toe, it's like I'm trying to reach the pinky toe to the left. From there, my hand is serving pizza, so I've got a platter in my hand. I want good tips after this, by the way. And my thumb is facing the back foot. I'm going to reach back, grab it, so now my foot is my pizza pan, okay? And I'm going to try and find the big toe side of the foot. If you just get the pinky toe, you might lose your grip when you flip it. So, serve the pizza, find the big toe side, the big toe bone, and then from there I'm going to point my foot, lift my left rib cage, lift my elbow. My right hand can use the wall for support in the beginning as I'm learning. And then I'm going to look back. Right, foot to head. Now, if you're taking the second hand, the hand is just going to find this other arm first. Then walk it down to the wrist. Walk it down to the big toe bone. We're finding that big toe bone. Lift your chest forward and then look back. Connect your elbows. Let your foot go and then let your head be the last to lift up. So if you were like, okay, whoa, you can rewind one and two, we're gonna do the other side. So come out of that, shake it out. And let's try the other side. I'm going to show without the use of the blocks this time, okay? So my left shin comes forward, my right leg is back. 
And if you have the flex hip flexibility, then you're sitting all the way down. Shimmy yourself close to the wall. All of the concepts are the same. My hip bones are trying their best to square. I'm turning my right hip down and I'm pressing my left thigh down into the mat to find lift. So my thighs are super strong. My right hip is pulling forward, my left hip is pulling back, and my left thigh is spinning out and down into the floor. From there, hands to the wall, and I'm just sitting, lifting my chest, letting myself settle. I have my strap handy this time. I'm going to make a loop, bend the foot, and loop up the foot. And then I'm going to slacken the strap. My thumb starts pointing up when my elbow is down. I spin my elbow up, and my thumb will point down. I'm just going to practice that a few times to train my body that this is what I want it to do. And it's like, what? In the beginning. Okay. From there, I stay balanced, and then I walk it in. Forehead to the mat, loosen the strap more if you need to, elbow to the mat for balance. Second elbow up, both hands to the strap, kick the foot in, pull in, flex your foot. Press your left thigh down, drag your right hip forward, lift yourself up, and you're in this variation. I'm just going to start by stretching my shoulders back, and this is pretty stretchy. And then I'm going to lift my chest, look up, and then look back. Elbows connect, foot to head. Maybe walk. Let it go. Head is the last to lift, rest. So for the full variation, I'll show without the wall. My left shin is forward, my heel is in close. By the way, if you're trying to do parallel pigeon in this pose, it's a much deeper stretch. So when you are doing the back bend, you can go ahead and pull the heel in closer to make yourself a little bit more stable. Then I'm going to lift up by pressing left hip down and spinning my right hip forward to square. Can stay here lifting my ribs and reaching my hand back to serve my foot. Finding the big toe side of my foot with my hand up. From there, pointing the toe and spinning my elbow up. And I might do this a few rounds to warm up my shoulder joint. And then left hand to the floor to help give my inf the information to square my shoulders and square my hips. When I'm ready and feeling square and stable, my left arm comes up and I find it to my forearm as I crawl it down to find the wrist, the hand, and the big toe side of my foot. Both hands holding the foot I lift my chest forward, look up, and then I let my head go back as I draw my elbows together, foot to head. I let it go. And slowly curl my head up. So what I see a lot in class when students are first learning this, because it takes a lot of flexibility here to open in order to find evenness in squaring in is this and they might have a, some tighter hips so they're not fully grounded but their legs are strong so they can stay up and they're upright they'll bend their foot and they'll catch some toes and then they'll do this compensation of a side bend to try and find the rotation in the arm as they struggle to take the other hand maybe to the toe. And then from there, they're trying to lift back. I'm exaggerating it. But you see how this side bend prevents them from finding a square, stable position. And a few times doing that is okay. I mean, that's how I learned it. <laughs> 
But over time, this collapse into one side waist puts a lot of pressure on one side in your spine. So you really do want to work from somewhere a little bit more comfortable, still challenging, but a little bit more comfortable so that when you do go up, you have this nice stretch in your side waist, right? And evenness in your hips and your chest facing forward. All right, so that's it for today. If you did find this helpful, um, leave me some comments, some feedback. Let me know what more you want to see. If you have questions, ask it there. And as always, be patient with the practice. It will come. Just look for how to find the practice in a safe and comfortable manner. Okay? Happy practicing.